my name is Dr. Michelle Benson, and I am here um, delivering my message for sharpening job skills, hard and soft skills. But a little bit about me first. Um, I am an online teacher, and I've been doing this for about 12 years. And I have also found that because I'm an online student or le earned all my degrees online, I could really relate to people that are taking their college online. So it's really, really helpful. So therefore, I present my topic to you, knowing all that and having all, having all that experience. You guys can still hear me, right? Yes, loud and clear. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> thank you guys very much. Okay. So here is my main screen. Of I'm going to read this as leaders, academics, and researchers from various disciplines. Speaking of disciplines, where are you guys all from? What classes do you presently teach? If you can type them in the window, that would be fabulous. Ah, leadership. Yes. I love teaching leadership myself. Perfect. It looks like Clark is typing. Not a teacher, but an assistant. Oh, hey, Clark. Awesome. Perfect. Global leadership, perfect. Wow, how exciting. <laughs> ethics, oh wow. I love ethics, that's a really good course. Operations, project management. Oh, I have experience with that, I love project management. How to think for yourself, excellent, perfect. Okay, information security, very, very cool. Thank you guys for typing. Okay, so we are all from a large variety of disciplines with a focus on student-centered learning, which this whole presentation is all about student-centered learning. So with society, with innovation, globalization, and technology, which are transforming online learning, um, hard and soft skills can no longer be viewed as non-essential, rather than they are imperative for a well-rounded and intentional online education. And I can tell you from experience that they are needed, hard and soft skills. All right, let's move on. So what we're going to do here is have a little bit of fun. So I created a poll for you to answer. Um, the question is, which superpower would you like to have? OK. So I hope you can see the screen. Mind reading is number one. And please answer your choice. <laughs> you already have a superpower, huh? Nice. <laughs> that is very, very good. What's your superpower, Dr. Price? <laughs> ah, number three. Very cool. <laughs> very cool. So we have two people that answered, 14 with no response. OK. Number five, aha. <laughs> already have a superpower. Excellent. I joined the ranks on that one, too. I'll take that one also. Number four. OK. <laughs> Number five. Excellent. Thank you, Anna. Number three. Cool. <laughs> you guys are good. Thanks. OK. So we're going to go ahead and move on. Thank you very much for sharing about your superpower. Flying is good, Ed. Yeah, flying would be a really cool superpower. And Diane, number one, mind reading would be very, very awesome to have. Already have a superpower, people. Good for you. More power to you. <laughs> I'd like to choose number five, too, if I were to choose. But yay for us. OK. So going back to the theme of our um, conference, what the theme was this year was to increase student engagement to improve learning. And we're exploring ways through these great um, video recordings that we're all viewing from when we first started about how to capture students' attention and maximize participation in their learning process. How do we reach students and how can we motivate them and interest them in their education? So what I'm about to present to you is what I've learned through the years and what I've found is the most important way to do it. OK, so first let's start out with what are hard and soft skills. Can anybody here tell me um, if they really know poorly what hard and soft skills are? 
go ahead and type in the window if you do. If you can tell me that you know exactly what hard skills and soft skills are. Yep, that is right. Hard skills are technical skills. And how about soft skills? People, perfect. That is exactly what it is. Thank you, Clark. So soft skills are personal attributes that enable someone to interact effectively and harmoniously with other people. So people skills, exactly what it is. And that includes, yes, Jan, exactly. Soft skills, people, emotions, right. And that's going to tie into the next slide that we look at. Soft skills are um, including how we act, how we convey information. Now this goes for faculty members and for students. How we get a hold of our audience's attention. How you manage yourself, your emotions, your attitudes, your mental and physical health. How you get your work done and your time management, which I really, really tell my students a lot about, being good time managers. How you use your creativity, problem solving skills, and conflict resolution are all soft skills. How you lead and how being qualitative in a research kind of point of view. Um, qualitative would be more of the soft skills. Okay. On the other hand, the hard skills are specific teachable abilities that can be defined and measured. So therefore, they would be quantitative. Okay. So this goes along with, um, with um, evidence-based learning, evidence being evidence from what can be measured, hard skills. And this includes what we know, examples of work, our degrees, certifications, Computer skills, math skills, programming skills, foreign languages, having a license and a profession, record keeping, and of course, can be defined as quantitative. So soft skills, people skills, hard skills, technical skills. All right, so scientifically speaking, we're looking at hard and soft skills. Soft skills, to be good at a soft one, emotional intelligence. Now, EQ is something Dr. Sun was talking about earlier in the presentation, if anybody saw it. And I was like, hey, cool. That's, that's what I'm talking about, too. But emotional intelligence, or using the right side of the brain, is known as the emotional center would be required. So there are tests out there that I give my students. I say, hey, guys, are you a, a left hemisphere learner or a right hemisphere learner? And they're like, what does that mean? Well, I tell them, here's a link to a test, which I'm going to tell you the link to later, to find out where you're strong. And to really, you know, add to that, to really, really know yourself as a leader is super important, especially when you have your degree and you're ready to go out there and lead. It's good to know exactly who you are, what your strengths are, um, and all that good stuff. So soft skills, the rules of change in soft skills, such as communication skills, Self-management will depend on the company culture or the people you work with. Okay, so what I tell my students is to be adaptable, to be flexible with people. You know, you have people skills, you want to make sure you can be flexible with other people and be adaptable to their needs also. So those are two of Dr. Benson's key words that I use almost in every class that I teach, flexibility, adaptability. Most soft skills are not learned well, but in school, but are generally learned by trial and error books and guides, okay? So with that, um, I tell my students, you know, try this book, try Strengths Quest. I show them on the screen when I'm teaching, you know, go get this book at Barnes & Noble. It's really, really helpful and you'll find out your top five skills that you can take with you after school or in your job right now. And um, soft skill tests to assess are um, commonly the Mayer, Salvoe, Caruso test and the Daniel Goleman model score. Those um, are fun to look up, so I tell my students or <laughs> instruct my students to do a Google search, check those out, look at what they look like, and, and see if you're interested in taking one of those or talking about it to, with someone else. Hard skills, on the other hand, um, to be good at a hard skill, um, the intelligence quotient, or IQ, is more in play here, and that is the left side of the brain, known as the logical center of the brain. So hard skills, technical skills, that's what we're um, going for, your IQ, I guess, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. Um, the rules remain the same in hard skills, except programming is a hard skill, and the technical skills remain the same. Okay. Hard skills can be learned in school and in books, 
skills and hard skills can also be mastered. Okay, sometimes it takes a lifetime to master soft skills, but when you compare it, hard skills can be mastered and learned in school. But the point is here is how are our students going to um, pull off hard skills without having really strong soft skills? Knowing themselves, knowing how they learn, what kind of learner they are. Are they kinesthetic? Are they um, visual? Are they auditory? That, those are things that I'm interested with knowing with my students. So I have them take those tests and let me know, OK, what kind of learner are you? Great. And then we adapt and be flexible to that type of learning. Now, the hard skills test to assess this are going to be the Stanford Binet test, the Weschler, the Woodcock-Johnson test of cognitive ability, and I put in parentheses there, the GATE program and the HICAP. These are um, programs in the public school system that, um, that are taken to see if students have the ability to think rationally or to think with analytical skills. I have a um, story about the GATE program. My family and I just moved to Washington about four years ago, and going back, way back in time, because my son is 15 now, but my son, when he was in second grade, took the Weschler test um, and became a member of the GATE program back in San Diego. GATE stands for, you guys, what does GATE stand for? Does anybody know? I'll tell you, but is anybody familiar with the GATE program? <laughs> okay, <laughs> no worries. The GATE program is gifted and talented. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Gifted and talented education. Hey, there you go. <laughs> That's wonderful. So I, you know, I've always wondered why they give it in the second grade, but, but they do. Yeah, it's a California thing. Here in Washington, they do the high cap program, but they don't base it on the test, I don't think. Um, but I found that kind of interesting and um, figured I'd relate that for you to hard skills, be it the way that people, not, not to the smartness of them, but be it the way they think in an analytical or rational way. People with high IQs are not, by all means, smart, but smarter than anybody else. It just means that they have a different way of thinking, and that has to be clear. And I always have to explain that when I'm explaining things like that, that your IQ doesn't even matter. <laughs> you have a number, it's just a number because it's all about the rational and the analytical way of thinking, which relates to hard skills. Now, at the bottom of the screen, I put 16personalities.com, and I've always had great luck with that. In fact, um, recently I wrote a course for another college as a um, curriculum designer, and I made 16personalities.com an assignment for my students. And um, with that, they were told to write a three to five page paper on their personalities and how they're going to direct those types of strengths they have to life after college or in their work. So I found that really interesting to add that as something that's actually being taught right now. <laughs> OK, emotional intelligence. Now we're going to look at each one of these individually. EI and soft skills. OK? So a statement I hear from managers is that they can, that they can teach their employees technical skills but they cannot tell them to have a good attitude, or teach them, pardon me, to have a good attitude. This is a negative statement and will lead to failure. So that right there says that there's really no people skills in that statement um, to me, and that's why I kind of had to analyze it and wonder what they were thinking by saying something like that. This is from a lack of understanding of the core competencies of, social, of uh, soft skills. Soft skills can be assessed and taught. And emotional intelligence is a strong predictor of that success. So we're going to get to how and why coming up on the further slides. But don't worry too much about the technical skills, because your students um, are enrolled in college, and they're, they have their classes. They're learning their technical skills and their hard skills. But, but my whole thing is to focus on more of their soft skills. Because why are you going through college? You're going through college to um, graduate and get a job as an executive or a leader, right? Well. Those type of positions need a good balance between soft and hard skills to really make it in one of those roles I have found. You will need to teach them how to show up on time, how to work in teams, and how to take supervision. Okay, so That's some of the things, which I'll cover more on the next slide. 
Now the other side, the hard skills, the IQ. So the IQ doesn't stand for how smart someone else is, but stands for how they can logically rationalize and think in an abstract or analytical way. Okay, so that's exactly what it is right there. Here is a free IQ test on the screen that I found um, was pretty helpful, and I researched this too. I researched some of the best IQ tests out there, and this was the best one I found personally. So you can take a note of that or, um, oh my gosh, five minute warning, holy moly. And the free right and left side of the brain test is also there too. Okay, here are some questions to ask the, to identify a person's um, soft skills and their job readiness. So I put these up here and they are from HR. And what I have found to be important in these questions is um, they are behavioral questions that you somehow or sometimes are asked in an interview, right? So I take these type of questions as an, as an instructor and I put them into a response to a discussion question and, and make them really tell me what they're all about, what they would do in a situation. Okay, so I need to hurry up a little bit. I want to cover a lot more. <laughs> okay, so according to research, uh, what soft skills are essential for our students? Now, um, I have two references here, one and two. In the contribution of an undergraduate's work readiness, the following skills are vital to successful employment, and those would be attitude, personality, communications, problem solving, critical thinking, and the ability to work well with others, and that is from research from 2016. And I always tell my students, too, to when you're writing a paper, please use references within the last five years. So they're very trustworthy and all that goes. Having a positive attitude, respecting others, and being trustworthy, on honest, and ethical are the most sought after skills that a candidate could have in careers in management, administration, and leadership. Okay? So there is that. Um, here are the hard skills that are essential for students in work readiness and in college. Strong analytical skills, okay, that are not only a strength in interview questions, but are learned in the content of our student assignments. discipline combined with soft skills will make them very employable. So it's important to have a nice balance there. I'm going to move on. Okay, let's take a, okay. So here is how to encourage and engage our students in becoming aware of their, their unique um, versions of hard and soft skills, offering meaningful and specific and comprehensive feedback with comments that relate to their future in, further, in a further degree. So with my students, I always tell them, Hey, so are you going to go for your master's degree? Hey, it's, it's go for your dreams. Go for the doctorate. What are you waiting for? You know, it's the total motivation thing. So offering that meaningful feedback um, really makes a difference in their personal lives. Um, it is essential to reach each and every one of our students on an individual level. Only then can we attempt to influence them positively toward their future goals and plans. Here's a little bit more on how identification of their hard and soft skills through online free surveys, which um, I have found through research to be very helpful. And I offer those in each one of my classes for their um, personal and professional development. OK, so here is why. Um, why encourage our students to um, become aware of, of their unique versions of their hard and soft skills work readiness and life after college. So why work readiness um, was actually the topic of my dissertation way back. But work readiness is the basis of individual success and motivation at a strategic level. And this is the basis of leadership and emotional intelligence, be it soft skills. Let's jump over to uh, life after college encouragement to use leadership behaviors and events such as attending job fairs, volunteering, and community partnerships can also be done not only in college, but after also for networking and all that kind of good stuff. And that's a continuum of growth in their soft skills. OK, so this slide might be a little bit hard to see. It's kind of small for me, too. <laughs> but why to encourage our students? Um, because our 
online students can work without supervision. And that's something I've used through the years to get work myself, because I can work without supervision. Being an online student myself, I found it very, very helpful to let my students know that that is a huge thing they're looking for out there um, in positions of leadership. And um, you know, HR is looking for people that can, or um, you know, positions are looking for people that can work without being supervised. So being an online student really adds 